Life's too short to drive boring cars. So if you've been looking for a premium European luxury vehicle, then you probably care a little bit about the reliability of that particular vehicle. BMW on one hand is likely one of the biggest players in terms of innovation technology. They're always stretching the boundaries of performance. Audi on the other hand, strong focus on interior quality, the all wheel drive capability, and of course they enjoy some of the parts that are often shared between Volkswagen, Porsche, Lamborghini. So it becomes a very difficult conversation when you're really trying to dig down deep and spend your hard earned dollars on one of these premium luxury brands. And ultimately, which one is more reliable? Is it BMW or Audi? Well, let's talk about that in a little bit of depth today so that you can go armed with the information to make the right choice and hopefully you don't wind up buying one of the most unreliable warthog luxury cars that Europe has unleashed on the planet. Let's get into it now. So let's look at a few of the models of each brand and then summarize this with the overall rating and then maybe that'll help you decide. But here is clearly one of the best Audis on the market today and it's the Audi RS3. These cars are absolutely immense. Latest headlights, we've got the four ring, and it's the RS3 Quattro. But this does this uses the Haldex all-wheel drive system, not actually the Quattro all-wheel drive system that Audi normally promotes. They have beautiful wheels like that, and you'll notice you've got the custom calipers that say RS on it. How about the wonderful carbon fiber mirrors and the large glass panel that allows all kinds of light into the cabin for the passengers. And we cycle around, you have a wonderful carbon fiber rear lip on the back in this excellent RS3. One and two massive tailpipes and you'll notice you can actually fit your hand in there. They're huge. And they've got wonderful LED taillights. And then you look down the side, you see this wonderful aggressive rocker panels leading all the way up to this wonderful little handle and a high quality interior with Q-stitch seats as well as leading up to the DCT transmission controller. Now these have been fairly reliable. They've got 400 horsepower on a turbocharged five-cylinder engine and they're strapped to a DCT double clutch transmission, driving the power to all four wheels, making them extremely entertaining. But there's not a lot of problems. There's been problems with quality and the seats holding up and them getting a little frumpy, rear tail lights, some electric issues along the way. But the core drivetrain has actually been pretty robust and that's clearly one of their stronger engines in the lineup. The only other issues you'll typically find with the RS3 is O2 sensors, the odd catalytic converter fault, and typically even the display screen as it's digital, of course, interchangeable through the selection on the, on the steering wheel. But overall, as I said, the drivetrain's solid. Now that's their subcompact sub hot rod. BMW has a subcompact hot rod, and right here we have the M2 Competition, a serious contender, where the RS3 is more based on grip, all-wheel drive, grip and go, point and squirt. This car is more a little unwieldy and of course with the looser front end and rear wheel drive platform, this car is insanity. But the M2 Competition is a glorious car. This is truly a track fiend. Right there, M2 Competition also has two and four pipes. You'll notice it has a big carbon fiber lip on the back trunk lid. Beautiful and amazing looking wheels. Standard BMW fair handles and they get their little sunroof. But look, carbon fiber mirrors, and it even has that gap, almost like the M4 does. Right there, M2 and BMW in their traditional, pretty standard angel eyes, and the conventional front grille that you'll find kidney style. How about the front spoiler? The interior in these are quite the hot rod, and you can get either a dual clutch transmission or a manual gearbox. So from a true driver's focus perspective, the M2 Competition has a leg up on the RS3 just simply because you can match it up with a manual gearbox, rear wheel drive, it's more conventional performance car. They're both very competitive when you actually put pen to paper and reliability isn't too far off kilter either. The engine under the hood here is copied from the M4 which is the S55, makes about 400 ponies, it's slightly detuned from what you're finding in the M4. And they're not the most unreliable package but let's talk about a couple of things. The manual gearbox is solid as is the DCT, but when matched up with the DCT, what that can initiate is a problem with shock on the system. And that can actually crack loose the crank hub. So there's a crank hub issue with these vehicles where the hardware comes loose and that can potentially wreak all kinds of havoc in the driveline. Now it's very rare, it's in low numbers, but it does happen and it seems to be more prevalent in the double clutch. Also, you have potential coolant leaks and again, the infamous oil filter housing leaks, both oil and coolant that you'll find with these vehicles. And on top of it, because it's a direct injected engine, you can and will find carbon buildup as a result of the valves not getting cleaned under fuel flow. Let's try another popular model. How about the Audi Q7 right here? 
popular vehicle because it's made for moving a lot of people. So, so many owners love the practicality of it. Let's take a quick look. Interesting Audi style, you'll notice they've got the projector and then another set of lights and there's your four rings and it's a quattro. Because Audi and their all-wheel drive system becomes a name brand thing. What is that? Now we're dealing with an S-Line, great mirrors, and you'll notice you've got the big sunroof, keyless entry front and back. Audi's big on using large oversized wheels, so it looks very attractive. And of course you've got these wonderful LEDs. Now Audi definitely was one of the pioneers of LED headlights and taillights, but it can haul some weight. And you'll notice it's got a massive trunk space to open up and engulf all kinds of hardware. Luggage racks to haul your junk. What about the interior? I've said this once, I've said it twice, and I'll say it a third time. They have seriously some of the highest quality, nicest interiors in the industry. So what's the overall reliability like with the Q7? Well, they're actually known by RepairPal as to be one of the more dependable versions within the lineup. But there have been problems with numerous check engine lights, misfiring, front tires that can wear very, very quickly from between five and 7,000 kilometers. Seems like a transfer case tuning issue. And a fuel tank overpressurization. There's an issue with that, that the system forces that to happen. And it becomes a worry for some customers. But overall, the engine and transmission haven't been excessively problematic. So what about BMW? Right here, we have an X6 parked right next to the beautiful Q7. And this is the lower end model. This one actually is featured with 35i, which means it has a single turbocharged twin scroll engine called the N55, much improved from the previous generation N54. But let's take a quick look. BMW and their classic kidney shaped grills. And of course, you've got these wonderful angel eye headlights, slightly revised with LEDs. Wonderful laser cut wheels. And they have a more stout looking front end with some amazing creases along the hood. How about the mirror? Beautiful as is the keyless entry there and an oversized sunroof as well as more keyless at the back. You'll notice this one has more slope to but this is called an SAV sport activity vehicle versus the X5 which is the sport utility vehicle SUV. One large pipe and yet another one on the other side of the X6. Now you'll notice the hatch is a little smaller. It's meant to be more of an activity vehicle crossover style. Some great profiles and lines on the side. You'll notice the body in white because it's that it shows more lines and you'll see the emphasis right here and then more crease along the side. A very beautiful design leading right up to this little accent there. And you've got these great little plastic protectors along the front fenders. So what kind of problems do you have with this particular vehicle? Well, because it's a BMW, often coolant leaks from water pump and thermostat, valve cover gaskets, and then you can get issues with coils as well as injectors as it's direct injected. So there are problems with these vehicles, although they are much improved over the previous generation N54, which you didn't find in this particular vehicle, but it was out there in the lineup. So let's talk about another popular model in the Audi Brown, it's the Audi A4, and it actually clearly gets decent recommendations in the last couple of years. However, there are some problems. Let's talk about it, and particularly as you get into the older versions of the A4, but let's take a look. And the A4 is a handsome little vehicle, of course, midsize, and with the great Quattro all-wheel drive system, does a great job of cruising down the road with the ice and snow. But it's been a handsome car and very popular. Great wheels. You've got keyless rear and front. And you've got a great little rocker panel that's slightly pronounced. And leads you up to the wonderful little headlights. There's your Audi and the Quattro. Front end looks slightly sporty and these great little jut outs here give it a little extra aggression. But we're talking about the S-Line in this case. And we have these wonderful mirrors. How about a sunroof? Wouldn't be a luxury car without one. Love those shark fin antennas. And circling around, beautiful little tail lights, of course, LED style on this A4. And it's the TFSI Quattro, and that's the engine in question. Here we have double pipes on just the one side because it's the A4. And yes, I agree, they're pretty little cars. They're very practical, very functional, but sadly they have their issues, particularly as you go back a few years. The two liter four cylinder TFSI engine has had a lot of problems over the years. Oxygen sensors being one of them, check engine lights being another, 
oil leaks, coolant leaks. Carbon fouling is because these are direct injected, that's pretty typical. You get oil leaks from the camshaft chain tensioner. And of course the valve cover gaskets as well emit some oil with some age. Ignition coils and plugs and they get costly. When you have to take them in for the dealer regularly, that gets pricey and the coils do fail. Faulty high pressure fuel pump, which results in rough running and poor running altogether or stalling or lack of starting. And then you have potential rainwater collecting in the plenums because of plugging off due to debris, leaves, grass, and etc., causing potential rot. And you can even sometimes getting the wafting smell throughout the cabin. But the bigger problem with some of these slightly older versions of the A4 actually has to do with timing chain and you get chain rattle or you get catastrophic chain failure which results in piston and valve contact. Huge problem and it's well known throughout the industry. The other problem is excessive oil consumption on some of the older models. Definitely want to watch out for that. So the earlier 2 liter 4 cylinder TFSI engines have been a bit of a problem. Now guess what, BMW has their own version of what they consider problematic and we have the N20. Now the N20 is a turbo four cylinder engine, ended around 2017, like you find here, that would be the last of that generation. Then they moved into the B48, much more reliable. This engine wasn't too bad, but there were some major issues if you bought some of the earlier models. I mean, typical BMW concerns, you have coolant leaks, oil leaks, that's common. Oil filter housing, you'll have potential leaks there. And sadly, you have oil filters collapsing under vacuum pressure and deterioration because the extended oil service intervals. You can also have charge pipes splitting, vano solenoids, which is your variable valve timing. When they fail, you get either sluggish running, poor acceleration, or other drivability issues. Coolant hoses already as mentioned, water pump thermostats, also problems, as well as some vacuum lines. Valve cover leaks are typically one of the more common issues where you're gonna find oil. Sometimes you'll get associated that burning smell. You know, you'll smell oil, burning oil on the manifold. You'll just get that swath, waft or you'll get that smoke and you'll actually sometimes see it come out from under the hood. But the big problem with the N20 was actually the timing chain and it had to do with the timing chain hardware, the ramps, the plastic, and they started to wear out prematurely, which could again result in a catastrophic engine failure. But again, as I say, I can see why people buy the BMWs with the great headlights, the, the wonderful aluminum wheels, the stylish designs, the state-of-the-art technology, iDrive systems, you always have sunroofs, optional X-Drive gives you all-wheel drive system. These are great cars to drive under warranty. So which one is really more reliable? Well, first of all, let's start with the annual service cost. $968 on your average BMW on the road per year and $987 for your average Audi, making the Audi slightly higher cost per year. How about the unexpected trips to the dealership? Well, the Audis actually see on average about 0.8 times in a year to make an unexpected trip to the dealer for repair or something you really didn't anticipate. Whereas BMW is 0.9, so you could expect BMW to see the dealership unexpectedly in a slightly more frequent fashion. And that's all well and good, but it's not just about the frequency of visits, it's also about the severity of visits, because that is a huge indicator. Audi actually 13% of the time is expected to see a severe outcome, as whereas a BMW is closer to 15%, making BMW un more unpredictable and slightly more severe and potentially more costly when major repairs come down the chute. So I'll give you the actual out of five star rating for both vehicles here in a second. But the bottom line is Audi has had numerous problems with electrics, modules, heavy oil consumption, and a few timing chain issues depending on the particular engine. BMW on the other hand, they've had timing chain issues, rod bearing problems, issues like the N63 that continually burn and deteriorate with time, making them almost an unsolvable condition. So neither brand is what you'd consider excessively reliable and they're both quite costly to repair. And when you're comparing them to a brand, for example, like Acura Lexus, most BMWs and most Audis find up falling a little shy. So let's summarize this. According to RepairPal and the collection of reported failures across the nation reveals that your average Audi is rated at three stars out of five compared to BMW's wonderful two and a half stars, making this a credible collection of information, meaning that Audi is generally more reliable than BMW. Now with all of that said, be sure to check out right there, great video, vehicles that will make it over 300,000 miles. Hope to see you real soon, catch you then, bye-bye.